What's up, family? Steve Sorry is back in the news. As you recall, he recently fired his entire daytime talk show staff in Chicago in search of a fresh start in Los Angeles. Say he want to get some fresh LA weather, tired of the cold in Chicago. Now, as you can recall, he didn't really have the decency or the courtesy or respect to tell his staff that they were being fired. He allowed his underlings to do the dirty work for him. Now these are people that he come in contact with every day. He worked closely with every day. If you ever been on a set of a talk show, you know, he's, you're working directly with people. You know, if you're the star of the show, these are people you're working directly with. But he didn't have the decency to at least pull people to the side and say, hey man, I gotta let you go. Nothing. Now, if that wasn't enough, this dirty riding scoundrel has followed up that disrespect with even more disrespect. He recently wrote a memo to the staff and it went like this. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. I'd like you all to review and adhere to the following notes and rules for season five of my talk show. There will be no meetings in my dressing room. No stopping by or popping in. No one, all caps. Do not come to my dressing room unless invited. Do not open my dressing room door. If you open my door, expect to be removed, all caps. My security team will stop everyone from standing at my door who have the intent to see or speak to me. I want all the ambushing to stop now. That includes TV staff. You must schedule an appointment. I have been taken advantage of by my lenient policy in the past. This ends now, no more. Do not approach me while I'm in the makeup chair unless I ask to speak with you directly. Either knock or use the doorbell. I am seeking more free time for me throughout the day. Do not wait in any hallway to speak to me. I hate being ambushed. Please make an appointment. I promise you I will not entertain you in the hallway and do not attempt to walk with me. If you're reading this, yes, I mean you. Everyone, do not take offense to the new way of doing business. It is for the good of my personal life and enjoyment. Thank you all. Steve Harvey, AKA Sorry. So that's how he handles his staff, y'all. Now keep in mind, y'all. Now I, I know some of y'all saying, well, you know, I mean, he, you know, I see the man being ambushed and he don't want to be ambushed. I get that. I get that. Now, the thing is this. It ain't, it's old saying, y'all. It ain't what you say, it's how you say it. And who you saying it to? How you talking to people? See, this ain't a man that that's talking to people that he barely know, that just work for him and they way down the podium. These are people that he talk to and he see all the time. Some of these people consider this dude a friend. In fact, many of them, they've been working with him for five years. So it's not really what he said, it's how he's saying it. You know, all of this, you know, all caps and do this, we're doing it like this, we're doing the new way of doing business. He kind of sound like he's getting his Donald Trump on. You know, with that, that being brass, you know, being, being all crud, you know, no type of class. That's what I'm talking about. See, you, you don't talk, you don't talk to your friends that, that way. You don't treat people that way who has been good to you. People that have worked with you, people that you know on a personal level. You don't handle people that you know on a personal level like that. You know, if anybody got an issue, I mean, you can talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it's a lot of people that work on, on that set. 
but it ain't so many people that work on that damn set that he really couldn't just tell one person. He could have got one person his assistant. He could have got an assistant or he could have gotten a, uh, what do they call him, associate producer or somebody like that and let them go to them with that type of letter. But no, he had to be the, the big boss, the big chief, the done daughter. You know, he had to rub it in their face. You know, I did this to you. I'm telling you, telling y'all, man, anybody still ride with this dude, man, the dude ain't a good person. Now, this is how he explained it to Entertainment Tonight. He said, I could not find a way to walk from the stage to my dressing room to sit in my makeup chair. Now, y'all know he loved his makeup. <laughs> anyway, he said, uh, let's see, he said, uh, I'm in the hallway. I'm getting ambushed by people with friends that come to the show and having me sign this and do this. I just said, wait a minute. In hindsight, I probably should have handled it a little differently. Now, that's for all you people that's commenting and saying he handled it the right way. See, he, 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 he understood. He said, I probably shouldn't have handled it that way. See, so he admitting, he know, man, see, people know when they're wrong. People know when they're wrong, and sometimes it'll slip out and they'll admit it. But he also said that, well, you know, I don't regret saying it, but maybe I could have used a different tone. You're damn right you could have used a different tone. He said, he went on to say, I just didn't see, I just didn't want to be in this prison anymore. Well, I had to be in this little room, scared to go out and take a breath of fresh air without somebody approaching me. So I wrote the letter. He said, I don't apologize for it. Steve Harvey will end his run in season five. Now, so this dude, he's going to end his talk show in season five and... He's heading to L.A. to do the new show he got called Steve. Now, I would like to say this. I ain't going to lie. The dude got some talent. I ain't going to front on him. He got some talent. But his talent is antiquated. His talent really is like for old folks. You know, 70 plus. You know, that he, he really more like on that level. People that still get excited when you can tell jokes about church. You know, some people, any kind of joke about church and eating cornbread and biscuits and hog miles, talking about, oh, you know, I'm trying to wrap it up because as soon as we leave church, we got to go eat some hog miles and chitlins and all that. See, that's good for that crowd. It's good for the chitlin circuit. You know, you, you know how some pastors, they get on the podium and, they start talking about, I got beat, beat, twitters, twitters, you know, you know, them type of people, man. You know, like you can always get a good laugh out of them if you start talking about how you finna cook up some greens and tomatoes and some potatoes and all that kind of stuff. He one of those type of dude. He a chitlin circuit dude. But if you really follow his career, if you really, really follow his career, every major thing that he's ever done, everything he's ever done, he's done it off of somebody else's name. Even when, even when he had the Steve Harvey show, that sitcom, Cedric the Entertainer actually carried the show because Steve Harvey was not funny at all. Cedric Cowles, that's who carried that show. That's who carried that show. Kings of Comedy, all other comics, they carried the show. He was the MC. All his, all his big come-ups really was, was somebody else. Even when he got the Family Feud, you know, that was already established. That was an already established show. It was a spinoff. You know, he ain't really got nothing on his own merit. What he's been able to do is, you know, work his hustle. I give him that. You know, he's been, been able to work his hustle and make himself available. But he a low-down, dirty, riding scoundrel. 
as a person, the dude lack integrity, big time. Don't have any kind of sense of loyalty whatsoever. Uh, the memo was totally unprofessional. Again, y'all, I'm not talking about the wording itself. I'm not. I'm, but I'm not talking about uh, you know why he wrote it. I'm not talking about the reason why he wrote it and the, the things that he said that the the, uh, the things that he said that he needed. Uh, I'm not talking about none of that. I'm talking about the tone of it. That I was. I, that part is unprofessional. That's not professional at all, and that's not how you do people. That's not how you treat people. Y'all keep in mind, man. This dude, he didn't always come off like this. He he wasn't always. He didn't always come, and he still don't come off like this. See, when he talk to y'all, the next time he go public and he say something in public, he gonna he gonna humble himself. Every time he get on that show, he humbles himself. He, he you know he know how to bring it back down to get y'all to fall for that shit. Then he start crying, <laughs> all that old crying and shit. Then he throw a little guard in there or something. Then he say somebody's grandma, something like that. He all them low key words to get y'all to break down and and start be thinking, oh, he's a good person. He's humble and all that. His ass is not humble. He's faking. If you think I'm lying, just ask the people that work for him. The dude ain't what he appear to be. He never have been. He's a sucker. He's a sellout. And. He's definitely a buck dancing coon. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.